back to Story Time Online. Today we're going to read about a robot named Clink. This story is by Kelly DiPuccio and Matthew Myers. Here we go. As far as robots go, Clink had his fair share of problems. He was rusty. Even his dust had rust. He was squeaky. Even his creaks made squeaks. And a day didn't pass without something falling off. Plink, plop, ping. But the problem that made Clink's dials droop and his circuits short out was nobody wanted an old robot. There's Clink right there at the top. He didn't have cool retractable arms like Zippy. He didn't have fancy attachments like Blade. And he didn't know the first thing about doing homework and baking chocolate chip cookies like Penny. The world, it seems, was no longer interested in a robot who had been programmed to play music and make toast. I think I would like that robot. I like music and toast in the morning before work. When people came into the store, they marveled at Zippy's ability to pick up dirty laundry and play baseball at the same time. When Clink tried to do the same, everybody just laughed. Every day, Blade wowed the customers, snipping and shaping one-of-a-kind hairstyles. When Clink showed off his clipping skills, the results were usually disastrous. And when children lined up around the store to sample one of Penny's warm chocolate chip cookies, nobody, not even the store mice, seemed interested in Clink's dry toast. At night, when the store was closed for the evening, the other robots tried their best to keep Clink's spirits up. Penny gave him cookies, Blade gave him a makeover, and Zippy gave him a pair of underpants. He meant well. One by one, Clink watched his friends go home with happy families. He hadn't been programmed to cry, but somehow he leaked rusty tears anyway. And then something inside that old robot broke, and he simply switched off his speakers and gave up. Many weeks later, a young boy came into the store. It was the same boy who stopped by every week to look around, but never bought a thing. Nevertheless, the proud shopkeeper always welcomed an opportunity to show off his brightest and best new robots. Behold, the amazing Colossal Bot. Too big, said the boy. Too winky, too twinkly, too pruney, too bouncy. Hmm, he's looking for something specific. Nothing the shopkeeper showed him was just right. The boy was about to leave when Clink heard the happy hum of music. Suddenly, the squeaky gears in his head began to turn again, and he got an idea. Clink stood up tall, brushed off the dust and cobwebs. Oh, there's Clink. There's the little boy. The old robot had never danced before, but now he was twisting and twirling, knocking over box boxes and toppling displays. At last, Clink had caught someone's eye. Wow. But then... Oh, so sorry, cried the shopkeeper. I've never seen him act like this before. Wait, said the boy. May I see him first? This troublemaker? The shopkeeper handed Clink to the boy. He's very old, and he's missing parts. Oh, look, he's trying to put Clink in the trash. Oh, 
The boy's eyes lit up. He's perfect! I'm perfect? thought Clink. It had been a very long time since anybody had thought he was perfect. Clink smiled. Plink, plop. The boy ducked. I'll take him, he said. Oh, he's so happy he's making toast. And so, as far as robots go, Clink had his fair share of good luck, too. He went home with his new friend, Milton, who, as it turns out, likes burn toast, is great at fixing things, and loves to dance. Well, that's great for Clink and Milton that they found each other and are going to have a symbiotic friendship. Well, you guys, have a great weekend, and I will read you a story next week. Goodbye.